Is it that lovely? I said to him. Oh, yes, and because of the cold, you sounded like this. Isn't that lovely? <laughs> Isn't that lovely? I'm cracking the cold tonight. <laughs> also, me fist as demonox. I'm slowly turning yes. into strong mad. I'm slowly turning into strong mad. <laughs> nice oh, feeling. Yeah, you got a rock, it's actually called rock slide. <laughs> anyway, anyway, so, uh, unbeknownst to you, I've started my recording, so we might as well get this show on the road. Ah, so you don't, so you have, so you've already done a test recording, have you, before I came? Oh, no, 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 you see. You just can't be honest. Usually, I would do a test recording. You know me, I would, would I am the first person who's all about the test recording. Basically, Tonight, he's doing it live! Tonight, I could not be bothered with doing a test recording, so... No. Now, I guess it's in the hands of God, as it were. So... Syndicate Dustup is recorded before a live studio audience. This is probably going to go down <laughs> terribly, given Ross's problems with his own internet connection. Which is to um, say... It appears to have stabilized. Okay, so, but I mean, still... We have thunderstorms coming through, so maybe it, it might tank again. But Now that we have this open. precedent, I am the, fearful it, that it's going to be an issue throughout the night. Here's the dice, here's the dice roller. Uh, I haven't made a new room. I'm just using the one we used last time. Give it to Oi. me. Well, it's in the chat, so you can see it. Unless it's, you already, need... it's already there. Omae wa mo shindeiru! Nani? Sixteen? Nani the hell? I say. Okay, uh... uh is this? I roll it. And, and... Oh gosh, a natural 20. Gee, I'm so glad to have it here and not during the game. Pause. Oh. <laughs> right. My natural 20 was absolutely hilarious. Anyway, so <laughs> twenty. Roll not twenty. The bar. Would you mind yeah. very quickly, very yeah. um, sporadically? Can you give us a round of introductions, just yes, for the sake to... of a uh, semblance of professionalism? Yeah. yeah, I will do. I was for. I'm What's just. I, I need to. I need to start my own recording as well. So. Okay. Uh, What's that? <laughs> Okay, I'll wait. Okay, okay, dokie. So, we're all in the room. So, are we? Okay. Are we too? What is a I'm room? Like the room. What well, kind like of room think... are we talking about? Is it a liminal space or it is? Is it an abstract concept? Is it a metaphor? Are we inside uh, uh, a metaphor? Uh, what a funny story, Mad Hog. It's it's a space where no one can hear you scream. Ah! Did you hear that? No. Okay. Good. Anyway, welcome everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry welcome for everybody. headphones users. <laughs> you mean all, all of, us. of us? Exactly. <laughs> no apologies. <laughs> that obviously that means that we need to take off our headphones and start using our speakers. And we need to start what? We, what we need to start doing this tabletop game in Morse code is what you say. <laughs> what the fuck did you just say about my mother? <laughs> Okay. okay, guys, yes, go. welcome one and all to Syndicate Bust Up Session 3. Hooray! Last session. Wait, hold we on, were... is it more Session 2.5? Can you go without interrupting once? See, I can interrupt too. I just wanted to do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, let's see how long if this if it will be a stage 3 or just stage 2, the final battle. It's this just, is it's... the final battle. Well, it's session three, but stage <clears throat> two, technically, if you want to go video game speak, but anyway. Anyway, stage two boss fight be coming up. So, anyway, first things first, I am your GM, Devar Aperon, bringing you all the uh, RK beat up homage, love letter, 90s, whatever you want to call it. And yet, you uh, couldn't guess Streets of Rage 4. Because I haven't played it anyway. So first, so first up, we have Brendan playing as Trevor. Hi everybody. Hi Trevor. 
It, we should Dalton. do that in unison. Hi, Trevor. <laughs> no, I'm not doing that. But carry Dan on. Oh, no. Dan Danton playing as Joe Hild. I'm here. Evalox playing as Lubu. He's already in character. <laughs> yes, it's perfect. <laughs> uh, Icy Pal as Nina. I am here to kick ass and chew bubblegum. And I um, have loads of both. <laughs> I thought, I thought, I thought oh you said the Oh my! And here I thought you were about to say, and all the bubblegum's gone. <laughs> That's... Oh. That's... That's called a, a that's called a subversion of expectations, the bar. That's called being pre being prepared. Ross <laughs> Ferries as cosplay, maybe. Barfing <laughs> rainbows. Yes, barfing rainbows, indeed. Yeah. Uh, that is a that is a disgusting joke, and I wish it dies. Well, <laughs> I actually, well, I mean, that was the first episode of Gravity Falls. Anyway, and lastly, Mad Hog my Master as Bevis. I see I'm always at the bottom of the list for you, huh? <laughs> I mean, you are so used to it. That, yeah, and, that, 50, you know. that and plus it's the uh, standardized way to deal with introducing people, you know, who are only guest starring. Uh, anyway. So you so, can say featuring Bevis. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I guess I've been demoted without me knowing. I mean, could be worse. Could be the Brian Griffin and Stewie show starring the Griffin family. Moving really? on. Crickets. 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 You assume that uh, any of us would be still watching Family Guy at this point in our lives, which is foolish. Oh. Ha! Ah, jokes on you, I never did. Good. I thought just... season one was interesting at the time, but was also fresh then. Uh, again, the only reason I made the joke is because I thought it was a meme back in uh, some years back. But no, it's, not, it's, it's, none of you got the meme -o. It's not any meme I've come across, and I've come across quite a few of them, so... I never really, less. I didn't want to say it, but anyway. anyway. So, I think now we've done the introductions and everything that needs to be said, I think. Other than the fact of, since it's been four weeks, uh, the party basically were on a bus. They got attacked on said bus. And now they have to deal with the, uh, the first of Vainglory's generals called Farmer Ted. And, yes. uh, and also someone... From Madhog's past, well, Bevis's past. Mm -hmm. And by the way, if in case you were interested, uh, I have the name of the character here. Uh, where is it? Oh, yeah, the guy is named Sir Roderick Van Pelsworth the Fourth. Can you put that name in the chat? I, mean, I, I put it in. I put. I put it in earlier ago. Actually, <laughs> I'm going to put it again yeah, because it's a it's it's a deliciously British name in the most uh, blatantly evil way imaginable. Even uh, even even more than Delilah Deathhide. <laughs> I mean, she's not British, <laughs> but he is. <laughs> oh, and by the way, since we're at it. The lady's name from last time is this Delilah Death Eyed. There you go. It's in chat now. So you can. Yeah. By the way, by a strange coincidence, this was not intentional. Yeah. I just I was just looking for a um, alliteration that would roll off the tongue well. A name that seems similar to Cruella de Vil in energy. Delilah Death Eyed kind came to mind, but Delilah is actually the Delilah from uh, uh, the myth of Samson, who cut the hair of Samson and uh, deprived him of his strength. In a similar fashion, she is depriving bears of their literal fur. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess that all ties together in a way. 
it's it's a, it's amazing when accidents like that happen. Yes, that's that's great. This time it was unintentional, unlike with uh, my previous character in that Call of Cthulhu campaign we did a couple of years ago. Anyway, anyway, so uh, I'm I'm so I'm going to start the session proper now. Where uh, yes, so a, a bit of Dante uh, in chat. You could say we were am boost. Dude. Dude, dude, come on. The session starts with a standoff, so to speak, with Beatrice standing amongst the group, staring over at your current enemies, Farmer Ted and the game hunter, Roderick, brandishing his double barrel shotgun in one hand and his machete in the other. <laughs> in the moment the limo appears to drive away, the wind blowing through the empty streets a page of a discarded newspaper passing through, the, bu bu the bus blocking the view of one side of the street, while the other side has what looks like a bargain shop with tables that have been set up outside said shop, with a rows of shirts on one table, and the other with some old-looking rugs, and sat beside that shop to its left, a small off-license shop, which to... Uh, anyone outside of the UK, the off-license is essentially is an alcohol shop. Okay. And the on the opposite side is a takeaway fish and chip shop. Hey. On the pavement... Have one. <laughs> uh, I think we all will have one. Anyway, yes. on the pavement is two public bins sat by side at the centre outside the bargain shop. And two wooden crates, one close by your side, and another close to Roderick. Um, oh, it's very evenly spaced out, it seems. Who's, who's doing the serial killer heavy breathing? I think it might be Demonox. Demonox? Yes. Wait, you... It I... sounds like you're doing very heavy breathing. Yeah, it's, which has me worried a little bit. Yeah, right. Yeah, I'm fine. Okay, okay. Uh, but anyway, there is one thing I need to uh, do though, and it's basically to do with the fact that two players did not say they got off the bus. <laughs> uh oh. Danton, you wanted to prepare something because of that reason. Uh, yes, uh, I was still on the bus, technically, so... Uh, okay, uh, so, quick thing. Make it quick, whatever you're doing. Well, yeah, it was going to be quick. Uh, Joe Hild's basically uh, holding basically one side of her head, and she's in pain a bit, and she just goes, like, must resist. And then she just looks around the bus, and I'm going to quickly pick up the cap of the driver that... Uh, and I'm going to look... Who else is on this bus that... You said two people. Take a guess. Oh, right. She... Joe Hill just looks busy, <laughs> hearing the snoring as she picks up the hat, and she just goes, Oh, Lou. You know, I, she can't believe he's still here sleeping, and she tries to wake him up and go, Lou, Lou. Mm. Wake up, sleepyhead. Slap. <laughs> bad idea. We got two bad guys outside. <sighs> uh, we have to go out and find, find someone nice to sleep in this bus. Joe Hill just looks around and goes like, I'm going to try and ambush them from behind. You want to follow me? No. Uh, let's go back to bed again. All right. Quick uh, mental note for who play it. Don't oh, try to um, aggressively wait. Yeah. Oh well, my god. Hi. Yeah. Well, Congrats Joe on Hill's the... like, uh, come on, we got, we got to get going. Like, and I try and pick Lou up and uh, try and basically go for the fire exit to basically get out of the back of the bus to basically set up for a back attack on Father Ted, Farmer Ted. And, uh, and Peltworth. And you're following him up. Well, if you're following her, are you, Lubu? Yep. 
because it seems he's not going to leave me alone until I do. <laughs> okay, so both of you, both of you, I want you to roll straight d20, Ooh. essentially, for this. I'm going to fail. That's a 16. <laughs> well, okay. Hmm. I failed. <laughs> <laughs> He's snoring too loud. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna say that basically, uh, what happens is is that Joe Hild, you're basically, uh, you're basically sneaking out very carefully, and all that. Lubu is not so much. He's just just gonna chuck himself out the window, and you catch yeah, him like. like <laughs> it's just a sort of roll out the window. Yeah, it's like a, it's just a very careless roll sort of thing that you suddenly go like. Strangely, he lands his feet. <laughs> Yeah. I on my feet. Yeah, we'll just say we'll just say that. So I'm gonna say that at least Joe Hill at least covers for that. You definitely feel a surge of energy running through your body since finding out stuff, or rather the feeling you're getting from this entire situation. I thought puberty already hit. <laughs> <laughs> A Chinese slipper hits over the head. I suppose. No one knows where it came from. That. <laughs> it mysteriously came from somewhere in the distance. So, okay. As, uh, as this uh, confrontation has been here, we have been, all, uh, have been doing this uh, standoff, just eyeing, eyeing each other, both sides. Pretty much. Getting it has been... Uh, he now has been looking around, uh, and uh, as and her and uh, scoping out the opposition, checking out the environment, uh, and uh, oh, and uh, passing through uh, over also the downed dead or unconscious goons. She as the uh, looks uh, blinks a few times, then turns to look at Ted with the. Uh, Fury and rage in her eyes. You... Do you have any idea what you are doing? Yeah, Ted just looks over to you and goes like, Love, I know more than you do, and you are s sadly unequipped to even understand what you, needs to be done. You are are messing with things you have no comprehension of. Children playing with loaded guns. Well, that's not nice to talk about yourselves in that way, is it? <laughs> I mean, that, that's just Texas every day. This is what's going to happen. I am going to take out my rage and frustration on your soft meat body. Then I'm going to ask you a series of questions that you are going to answer. The only difference will be how much do I have to hurt you before you talk? Oh, right. You deal with that crocodile dandy wannabe. This one, points at Ted, is mine. And she smashes her fists together and, sh and uh, shouts. Uh, Day shines to brushwood, and I activate my stance. Oh, cool. And By the way, he's not Australian. <laughs> she said Crocodile Dundee knockoff or something like that. Wannabe. Like, yeah, yeah, wannabe. Yeah. Wannabe. And, uh, and as uh, Nina activates her stance, you see a uh, white light uh, cover her and uh, then spread from her to each and every one of you, creating this uh, aura, armored aura around yourselves. Ooh. Oh, armored aura, ah. the best kind of aura. By the way, this means Tenora. that this means that not only will damage be lessened from hostile attacks made against you all, but it also means that any damage types that could be inflicted upon you can never stick at all. <laughs> Yay, side effects could not work. That's, Speaking, and, that's very which, good. What's and they, everyone's health like? I, I think I'm at full health, uh, and mostly because the virus has not kept track of it, and I have not, so I'm going to say okay. I'm at full health. 
No, uh, I you actually did. Like I, I actually did basically did some quick looking to basically estimate what your health is, Madhog, and you have about eighty-two percent of your health. Okay, from it's the fine. Two session. As long as you're keeping track, I'm fine. <laughs> yes, yeah. I, I'm sixty-nine, by the way. Nice. Nice. <laughs> Obligatory. Obligatory wait, wait, wait. mention. According to my notes, I'm at um. 82% health, but I only have 23% of my armor left. Of my clothing left, really. Right. <laughs> Again, with, with this Queen's Blade. <laughs> Bollocks. Get over it, Mad Hog. And, and as after Nina has uh, activated her stance, she starts marching towards Ted. Yeah. Okay, but what's your health? Okay, okay. Oh, my health is 72. Okay, oh, that's what, uh, My health is 53%. Order. That'll be, the, that'll be the third order of this entire okay. encounter, but let me first... But before you, before you... Before the battle starts, there's... You know, Roderick goes, says, I shall turn the perter into prey! tally -ho! And brings a horn to... Can you... Uh, to can you <laughs> the bar, can you be a little bit more posh when you say it? I am... Uh, well, I am trying to with my... Throat as it is. I say, I will bring the prey to bear. Tell her what, what? Uh, it is a very difficult hunter style voice. Then you, it's supposed to be like this. <laughs> okay. I'll okay. Have to okay. Telling the British people how they should bread. <laughs> I don't. But they, oh, but they, like to start telling the Italian how to do I mean, Italian. They've been telling the rest of the world how they shoot the rest of the world, so I think it's fair. No, like, that's America. No, that's America these days. Like, okay, yeah, well, that, we conquered the rest of the world. Oh, that was okay. That was Britain before America, though. But, uh, we but, all yeah, agree. But guys, and, can we leave uh, politics today and actually yeah, come on this game? Yeah, yeah. 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 Kick. Okay, next. Okay, next is Ted, who basically goes like. Time to go with, to the abattoir with you. <laughs> and, uh, and then the fight will start officially. Defy adversity! Fresh em! Bing, bing, bing! Um, Round uh, one. What are, uh, I'm sorry, what is this? <laughs> this <laughs> insert, it, insert fighting game name here. <laughs> but, well, yeah, because, you know, that's supposed to be the inspiration for this. Uh. Uh -huh. Okie dokie. So speaking of which, Ross, you're up first. Okay, activating my stance. Uh, no, you you, you haven't got enough yet. I oh, said pal. more juice. You need a bit more. Okay. I haven't and used then, this, though. Um, I will just... um, fling a um, ice ball shoe. at uh, one with head. Okie dokie. Okay. Shoe ice cone? Okay, dokie. Let me, I need to get my bearings again on this, so... Ah, here we are. He launched so, an ice cold in the shape of a boot. Ro roll for your offense. Um, Boots that could have been better. Right, let me take a look-see. Okay, so that's gonna Rubbish be a... boot to the head. Okay, it's gonna be a two-hit combo. Let me... He's firing icicle. Yes, he's firing icicle. Ah, freak! I have to. I basically have to relearn essentially how to juggle things again because it's been four weeks. Take time. <laughs> no, we don't have time. I know, I, I, I'm just basically trying to be Sports. accommodating. The way that I see it, um, Devon, just for um your own mental well-being. Um, if you stress yourself out, you're only going to be sloppier with your juggling, so, um, try to take in a slow and steady pace, which is from, um, personal experience. Don't feel pressure. Okie dokie. That's really good to make it harder. Yes, thanks, Frost, for supporting with my... <laughs> Okie dokie, so... That's that, that, that amount of damage done, and does it stick? Uh, no, he is able to stave off being off the frozen damage type. Let me make a note on how much health he's got left. Uh, 
Okay, so while we're waiting, while, while I'm doing that, Brendan, you're up next. My whip is still destroyed from the uh, boss battle, right? I'm afraid yep. so. Yeah, I was just clarifying. And yeah. uh, if I was going to try to cattle prod one of these guys because they're bosses, it basically wouldn't work also, right? It, it would work on the bosses. It's the other ability you have that wouldn't work on them. Oh, yeah, because I actually wrote unusual bosses in the other one. There we go. Good. Then uh, uh, I'm going to try to uh, prod uh, uh, Roderick because, uh, you know, why not? So L luckily, for, luckily for you, he is in the close section. So that means you are close by to him. So uh, get to cattle prodding then. So roll for the defense. Yeah. Well... Is that's, my a, roll. that's a that's a decent roll, I would say. That, that's better than average. No. It's not a one. <laughs> okay, let me take a look. Definitely better than one. Okay, dokie. So he takes he takes that much damage. <laughs> so I rocked him and pulled the the, the cattle prod uh, off of the the holster on my back, and. Uh, uh, like, kind of roll to his side and try to hit, try to prod him uh, in his side. Yeah. So, 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 so basically, you basically strike true right into his sides, but he seems like he's able to stave off the effect of being, you know, uh, letting the electricity get to him, so to speak. So he's probably not weak to electric. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Next up, Danton. I don't know, goons. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. Boss fight. But uh, anyway, uh, I, before I basically move anywhere, I just basically go to uh, Lou, whispering to him, I think one of them has a pillow, a nice soft pillow for you. And then I basically start moving basically to try and get behind uh, Farmer Ted. Uh, can, can I basically. How close can I get to him? He's, uh, let's see, compared to you, uh, he's basically, I had it on my head that he was in the long range, but because you're at the back of the bus, which is where he's at, that yeah, means close you're close to him. All right, so we're just right behind him. Yep. Pretty much. <laughs> we still right behind him, because... Right, oh, so... That's what works out. I'm just going to basically... Uh, Get mid range behind. Uh, can I use my uh, Tanda Blossom on him by, by infusing it in the hat? Yes, you can. Mm -hmm. Then and I'm going to infuse it in the hat and I'm going to strike uh, Farmer Ted with it then. Also, I should basically stress that because the hat worked in this way in the last fight, it has a chance to go to another target. Okay. So roll for Sorry, your I just like the fact I just I just like the fact that like, you're sneaking up that and like, Lubu's like after giving you a very strange look of why would I care that they have a pillow for me? And then like, Lubu's just like walking casually behind her. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so, uh anyway I rolled seventeen, so Joe Hill basically like just uh throws the hat at Farmer Ted <laughs> I'd jump at while that. basically going like Tanda Blusser! And then just throws it as it fills it up with light energy to uh, strike him. Pinball time. Bing. Right. Let me, let me see here. And first things first, I'm going to basically say that uh, first Father Ted basically hears you say Tanda sort of thing and looks behind him. As, and it's, but it's too late and he gets hit by the hat sort of thing, like r right across his head sort of thing and it bounces off to Roderick Point. so it's like a so it's basic, so it's pretty much like a pinball and it comes straight back to you yeah, she, ca she catches it and then goes like goes, goes like the light is going to punish you both Sailor Moon <laughs> yes. You do the world, you might do it. Okay, okay, that's. That have better been a glass of water. Uh, yeah. 
Okay, good. I will drink here. Let me just do uh, quick calculations. It's not like I'm drinking my fruit smack. smack. Fruit what? No, what smack. I'm saying is that it sounded like something else, specifically. Yes. Okay. So that's the da that's the damage they both take from from that. Though it's though neither though sadly neither the holy uh, damage types basically worked on either of them at this time. Uh, oh. You know, t Ted basically goes like, "Ah, a pincer attack is it? That makes things more interesting." Uh, it, it does. Shit questions. <laughs> Anyway, Roderick's hey, up. Way. Roderick's up next, and let's see what his options are. Hmm. Let's see. Obviously, he's going to go straight for Bevis. <laughs> Yo, oh no! And, and he's going to basically just go at it with his machete. So let's see how this goes. Just need to. Do do do. Bebe, don't. Bebe, you're coming too fast. <laughs> you're coming on to. You're, com you're coming on too strong, Bebe. Buy me dinner first. Just. Hoo ha. Okay, let me let me just do a bit of calculation here because I need to. That and I need to see your def your. Defense sort of deal because I need to remember this time. You know, I have to mitigate the damage this time. Mitigate away the bar. Yes. Same as me. Yes, it should be fifteen percent. So, uh, so, let me. Do, do, do. Okay, so he does a one, two, three. Okay, he does a four-hit combo on you. Why did you make things Ouch. so more, much more difficult for you by adding percentages into the mix when you could have just counted straight numbers? That's the thing. I basically did with with straight numbers. I basically actually in my notepad I actually put in essentially break marks on whereabouts the uh, you know of how many combos can be hit within a num a range of numbers on the dice roll. Sure. So anyway, I need to remember where I was now. Any anyway, four, four hit combo. combo? Uh, yeah, the, be four the bear was yeah, getting a four hit combo on him. Yes. Just let me let me do the calculations now. Just need to put the pad over here. No, well, calculate over here. Good idea. It would help. Good. It would help if I was on the right notepad for this. It happens. I guess you're the bare side. Yep, the the worst side. Tell me just how much I should be selling this attack. Yeah, does that be just get around to it? Fifteen percent. Uh, you're taking about 26% damage from that. Ouch! A lot. Ouch! Ouch! That's, That's smart! That's like quote with your health left. Ow! I just went disappeared here. Let Ow! Me just, uh... I've never been stabbed before! <laughs> Dead! <laughs> he's actually slashing you, so basically he's going like... Ow! I've never been slashed before! <laughs> and even and he, he, he even he even finishes up with a with a like a a back swing essentially where he just twirls and just <laughs> just swings his blade across. Ouch! 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 I am lost. He that, now uh, in health. That's that's you know. I would say that sucks, <laughs> but actually that's slash. <laughs> Ow! That's. Hmm. Well, really af there. well, after he's done taking all that, uh, Bervis slow. Bervis takes a step back. He's looking on the ground. 
then slowly raises his head at his at his opponent and says, "Well, my turn now, Bebe. And now I wait for my turn." <laughs> yeah, my turn now. And he knocks your what turn else? now. Uh, let's see, there's only the two of them, so I. Unfortunately, my ability won't continuously trigger if, say, a new batch appeared. Just yet. So I can't continuously taunt. Uh, it basically would be a cooldown sort of thing if yeah, you taunted. Yeah, it, it would only work on the two of them right now. Yeah. So, given the fact that Bevis says Roderick has just run across to Bevis, to Madhog, uh... The only person close to me then would be Ted. Pretty much. So I might as well go attack Ted. Do you have any fancy equipment or gear magic sort of going on? I'm just I'm a basic person. Of course. So Does he even I have like roll... a, an enchanted pitchfork or something? No. <laughs> I'm, I'm a kind okay. of Chinese for starters. Okay, so you're just going for a normal attack, are you? Well, yeah, I don't know any abilities ever. I would have to let me take. I could take a you look know, again, but I don't. I, I, anyway, I know he's Farmer Ted, but whenever you speak his name, uh, Father Ted, Father Ted comes to mind. <laughs> yeah, the, the sitcom show. That, that sometimes <laughs> I think of it. Oh. Well. Yes, I would be mm. happy to. I would be all too oh, happy boy. to kill uh, Father Ted. Ted for a bad day. Wow, Holy that's a shit. Yeah. Holy <sighs> shit. <laughs> Okay, uh, uh, Evanox, uh, um, this is uh, going to be a this is going to be a super powerful attack. So, uh, uh -oh. if you, if you played the Yakuza games or know how yes. overly ridiculous moves can be in that, yes, I have Yakuza games. Yep. So go ahead. I'm also, don't forget, I'm also playing characters that fights like um, the guy out of Kung Fu Hustle. Yeah. So <laughs> as Tez rebounding from the being smacked in the head by a flying hat, ob job style. Yeah. You see, like, Lu no one even sees Lubu move. Lubu's arm is suddenly just around Ted's shoulders. Yeah. And of like, course, oh, what the? Oh, did you say Kung Fu Hustle? I love Kung yes. Fu Hustle. Uh, you know the fact the um, innkeeper, the husband? Yes. That's Lubu's fighting style. Oh, that's great. Nice. <laughs> I love it. It's like, huh? I can see a picture like Ted's suddenly surprised that Nelson's now suddenly got an armor on his shoulder. Yeah, but as soon as you do that, he reacts in a reflex and tries to hit you. And then opens up to whatever you want to do. Yeah, so as his, like, is it a spike hand swing? He's basically trying to do a oh, classic... Punch. He's just trying to do a classic, uh, thuggish like punch towards your direction. Yep. As he punches on that, you see his hand, Lubu's hand, like, slowly grab it. It's like, punch, comes chest, grabs, twists, flips him, spinning, twists him that much, it actually spins him midair. <clears throat> so he lands, and then he just goes, and this seems like something spin around, dragging Paul Ten across the floor, he does. <laughs> Before he launches it straight at, can I do this? Uh, you could basically launch him in a direction. Yeah. Uh... Flying missile at Roderick, then. This <laughs> is... Okay, I need to roll to see if Roderick can dodge it then with his speed. Then, so and let just me... an extra thing at the end of the day, he gets a kick in. Of course, <laughs> like launch and then he spins around and he hit nails with his foot. This is why I still pirouette in one foot, by the way, full bounce style. This is this is this is great because this means essentially if you when you roll natural 20, not only do you do the full damage of what you rolled, but also of the full combo damage you would do. But that yeah. also, but also, that means any damage mitigation is cancelled out. So that means yeah. you just do like pure damage. It's more, that moves more fun when he's got two people there because he can actually do them both on shoulders, both shoulders. Of course, and almost get the bones to beat each other up. Let me uh, take away. And just while you're doing that calculation, and he's finishing his spin off, he's either like bent backwards almost. Just bent yeah. backwards, and it's like fully spins. Lands on the ground, but he's landing like a sleeping, po sleeping pose. Nice. Hmm. 
sadly, Roderick was able to uh, oh. to, to sidestep it. He's like, huh? yeah. turns around, what the? How, 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 however, he does hit the table full of t-shirts. Not the table full of t-shirts! <laughs> oh my god, not the table full of t-shirts. Because no, I'm with there stupid some... he land next to him. No, there were some... His head. <laughs> some there was some bad there was some Burbis merchandise being sold at the table, so he's pissed. Ah, no. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's some of that is some of that retails for two hundred dollars. <laughs> so two P in the UK. Got you. <laughs> with I this economy it would be sold in a in a bargain shop as, as well, I but said, still. <laughs> to be in 1999, people yeah. just don't know the value of things. <laughs> okay. Well, I was going to explain. Go home. Such a country. I'm leaving. But well, I appreciate it. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Goodbye. I'm leaving this campaign forever. Now I'm offended. <laughs> 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 okay. Oh no. Okay, I need to. Okay, okay. I've I've figured out everything Dead. I needed to do figure out. So let's see who Dead. is who is Dead. next. Ted's next. Okay, Dead. okay. Just went okay. Ah, okay. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Because of all the damage you guys have been doing, that means he has access to something which he's really pissed off now about. He would have used it later, but he's pissed off right now. I wouldn't be pissed off too if I just got launched across the floor. Yeah, so he basically, he basically gets up from the piles of t-shirts, chucks it off and goes like, Bye, you're, mo you're more trouble than you're worth. <laughs> and he, and he, then he goes like, Many hands make light work. Uh -oh. oh no. Uh, Not many hands. <laughs> and it's suddenly, a parlance user! <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Why are and we surprised? Suddenly, and suddenly you see that his his whole body just starts to shift as if like there's multiple versions of him. And then suddenly you see a pair of arms come out to his sides. And then another pair. Oh, okay. and, and then another pair. It's almost rough. And he's... <laughs> and, and then he becomes solid again. With four pairs of arms now, <laughs> and he's like, uh, "Let's, let's get ready to reap what you sow." But that makes no sense. I didn't sow anything today. Right. Let me think now. Let's see who should he go against? Hmm. Let's just take a look. Yeah. That's disgust. <laughs> Brent, why are you saying this disgusting? Him growing extra arms? Pretty gross. I mean, yeah. that's, um, I mean considering what I'm used to, to see, that's just not that. Sadly, my standard is a lot uh, lower for that. Yes. Okie dokie. So I'm. The f there's one. Let's see. Ah. Uh, okay. So I'm basically going to have to. I'm flick. Let's see. I'm just gonna roll for it. Let me see who we got. Three. Uh, of course, yeah. it's sure as wrath. <laughs> everyone's yeah, gonna sure make that. That's what everyone's gonna reference. But my initial one was going to be Cotton Eye Joe, but I couldn't find an image that would be. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, first things first, he's going to do is that uh, he's going to chuck essentially seeds into the way of uh, the majority of the, of the group closest to him, which would be where Bevis. Cosplay. Let's see. And Icy Pal and Tr well, Nina and Trevor are. Which basically means it's a. It's basically he. Uh, 
he basically one of his arms basically reaches into his bag of seeds and basically chucks it your way and suddenly you know as if by magic a lot of vines start uh, growing in the area <laughs> jojo part five <laughs> the worst one <laughs> they're all and terrible I... don't worry I mean, I, by JoJo standards, I yes, mean. Yes, 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 yes. Can we keep and, moving? And, and, and the, another, set, the, another set of arms will basically then reach into his bag, throw, in, throw upon himself, and then suddenly grows essentially a walking wheat field with him. A walking wheat field? How does that even work? Does it have feet? Does it have feet? Is it a feet? Is it a field with human feet? He's that attached it to himself. He's a sat he's attached it to himself essentially. What anyway, I'm about, is that three heals for him? <laughs> nope, it's not a healing spell. I can give you that much. Oh good. I so am trying. It, and to... then, so is it now like he's standing in the middle of a field that uh, moves with him, or is the wheat uh, going I... growing out of him? I think his entire body has become a wheat field. I'm trying to picture it in my head. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We kind of need a little more description than that. Some kind of. Not get a mental image of this. Some kind <laughs> of British countryside body horror happening here. <laughs> scarecrow. It's a scarecrow. Yeah, that's, like I said, he's basically grown essentially like what is akin to wheat, essentially, coming out of his body ah. since, he, since he planted seeds upon him, and, uh, it's, and it's basically grown a that lot. So that sounds... Uh, okay, what if you take cottage core and um, hardcore metal and some somehow you mix them together <laughs> and you get this monstrosity? At this point, he's going to now move towards Nina, and start to wail on her. Oh, nanny. nanny? I mean, Nina? <laughs> okay, let me roll. Because that, this is nice a... damage protection on. Yep. Yeah. Just need <clears throat> to change this. How many girls has he had now? Has he, like, had, like, this two? Is, this, or, or this, the, is, the... this is basically the free of his actions, essentially. Okay, so he's got three actions, got it. That's not him in my final form. My you have to <laughs> you have to wait for harvest in spring to see my final form. <laughs> Curse those legendary actions. <laughs> okay, let's see. That's let's see. So it's, okay, let me actually Ah, I pressed the wrong thing. Okay. I'm going to basically Look over your damage mitigation plus the uh, the extra from the stance power. There, ah, there you are. Let's see. Let's okay. So take mm. with that's thirteen percent, and then okay. So after all that, you take about 10 damage from all the arms he's basically been hitting you with. Thank God for the damage mitigation. Yes, because essentially, his arms essentially, if he's using them in conjunction with himself, that means uh, essentially he's attacking with all the arms at once. <laughs> <laughs> essentially. So basically, uh, uh, Gum Gum Gatling... Uh... What's the yes. name of the move? <laughs> no, actually his, the move. His, yeah. his arms is the goons, essentially. Yes. That's that's lovely. <laughs> You're conjuring up quite the say, image. That, but so, though, if he's not careful, if not careful, that could actually inflict a lot of damage. It yeah, wasn't okay, it, listen, three actions. it sounds like we're fighting a boss in a platinum game. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so next up, Mad Hog, it's your turn next. What's your okay. plan of action? Okay, so so Bebe, as I told you as I told you several minutes ago, 
my turn now. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned Kung Fu Hasso, Demonox, earlier. Yes, that's my character style. Yes, you mentioned the innkeeper, the guy from... Uh, the husband in yes. Kung Fu Hasso. You know what my favorite character from that film was? The wife? The wife, yes. <laughs> I want to scream on his face as loud as I possibly can. Uh, 13. Uh, okay, so a roar to the face. And then I pull a Kung Fu Panda and uh, basically I try to hit him with my stomach. <laughs> because I thought it would be funny. Uh, of course. <laughs> let me, uh, let me just go over to six. Okie dokie. That's that part done. Need to get over to Roderick and his need to do damage mitigation now for him. Okie dokie. So that's, he takes that much damage. And he will, and he, and, be, and because you did your full combo hit, that means he will basically get pushed to the ground, essentially. For what oh. it's worth. Oh, trying to get stepped on, eh, son? Sorry, I'm not into that. <laughs> if I may, this is going around the table at an absolutely glacial pace. So let's try keeping the um, the the one liners and um, flavorful descriptions to a minimum, so we can actually get everyone to have turns tonight. Because as it stands, we'll get around one more round of combat before we have to wrap at this rate. Yeah, it's yeah. not it's, it's not even been an hour. It's but it, this is the first dive. Even anyone has gotten. In, not even everyone has gotten in action, and it's been an hour. Actually, it's, 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 it's been 52 minutes, technically, and five minutes of that was taken up by the intro. My point stands. I know, I understand. Yeah. It's, 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 I'm also going to take fault for that because of the, you know, the fact that, uh, you know, I'm juggling things and... Uh, I get, you know, no, one's, get... no one's playing blame on you on this one, Devar. I'm, uh, um, let's yeah, make a I'm just concerted I, effort to, as players to get this around the table, please. Yes, uh, but yeah, uh, let me let's see. I was on a mindset of something, and I'm trying to remember what it was now. Oh, what was it again? Roderick's on the floor. Ice Pass uh, turns come up next. Yeah, I know, but it's like there was something important I was supposed to do at this point, but it's Did lost. Some, me. Did something activate on Roderick's? No, no, it's not Roderick's side. I'm basically trying to remember because I was on a system and then I suddenly... Mitigation? I already did that, actually. Uh, so, wait, did I actually write it down? Because since... No, I did not write it down. Because I'm trying to keep track of his of the health now of these guys. Since rather than number of hits, I'm doing by health percentage with the bosses. Anyway... Okay. Okay, so that's done. Icy pal, you're up next. <clears throat> okay. I keep, I move. Uh, I keep go moving towards Ted and uh, start uh, just hammering on him. Well, looking for you, he's right next to you since he decided to come strike you. <laughs> Okay, so the... Well, yeah. And it's a five. Throw a punch. Oh no, it's Jason's basic punch! Right, so... <laughs> right, so that means you've done... It's Actually, let me take a look at what his skill says about Ted, about now that he's got a wheat maze with him. I like... Basic brush? It's more the lines of he's... Uh, let's see... Right. It's, Thank you. I'm, look, okay, so let me look over Nina. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to basically level you here, Icy Pal, because of the wheat maze situation that he's got going on. Essentially, he's using it as a means to uh, take less damage because essentially he's uh, 
moving his body in a way that, uh, you know, that it's kind of like you're trying to get your punches to reach him, <laughs> but only if so few of them get through. <laughs> So, so, so in the so in this so in this case, he basically takes extra damage mitigation from this okay. himself. So a singular punch was um... essentially it got uh... yeah. Sorry. Ooh. Anyway, anyway, damage. Oh, yeah. it's like got to feel the weak she feels like. Yeah. That's anyway. Okay. Okay, so I believe now we're back at the top of the round. Yep. Yeah. Which is Russ. Russ. Okay. Yep. So, um, since my ice bolt is on cooldown and um, Ted is within um, close range of me, correct? Yes, he's with close range of you since he went after Nina. Then I will just attempt a normal sword combo. Okay, okay. Roll for Roll for your offense. That's pretty good. 16. That is pretty good. Dealing with ice piles dice again. Yeah. Low blow, Ross. Low blow. <laughs> so in this case, you do a four hit combo of your five hit against Ted. So let me. And consider I'm using a slashing weapon. Maybe that's effective against wheat. <laughs> <laughs> Only if you are wielding a scythe. <laughs> That's a good point, but still, it's a, 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 a sword. I a sword. Wheat? Are you talking about? <laughs> hey. Somebody had to do it. Bra, 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 bra. Bra, 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 bra. Let's see. It being present. Uh, okay. I'm gonna say it takes about that much damage, so. No, not plus. What the heck are you doing? I don't know. Wow. He healed. Uh, that was. That would be stupid if he healed. <laughs> Okay, he's... Right. I hear the sound of Discord posting, but I see no posts in chat. Anyway. I think no, it's in the other that... one. Anyway, so, Brendan, you're up next. <laughs> Alright, I'll uh, just go for a uh, kicking combo on uh, whoever was close to me, because I don't remember anymore. Roderick. Okay, so Roderick would be close, though. You can move towards uh, Ted as well if you want to. Seven. Now I'll just stick with uh, the the freak. The hunter? The, yeah, with a crap roll. Right. Ah! So, seven. Yep, seven, which means... Uh, Probably eight. two. Yeah, basically do a two-hit combo. Essentially, so I'll, just, I'll I'll go in with a uh, 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 a knee shot and then a uh, and then just a, a kick with the opposite leg. Right then, the B. Let me uh, add that to your stance power to see to see how much you will have. Okay, let me uh, get on to. Right. Uh, Roderick. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. So, the that much. Okay, okay. So, okay, so next in the lineup is Danton. Uh, question. How close am I to one of the bins? Let's see. Based on where you're positioned, I believe uh, you would have to move to uh, 
move at least to that uh you have to move once to that range to get there because what i want to do is i want to basically roll a trash can towards uh father ted and uh <laughs> farmer ted uh and <laughs> Roll the trash to Father T Father Ted. Yeah, that's yeah that that yeah that's my review of your show, Father Ted. <laughs> uh, okay, okay, I'm dumping on it. <laughs> okay, so so I think about the about the British bins of this particular make. Because essentially, they're two of them side by side, and they're stuck together. But that means you're chucking essentially both of the bins to his direction. Hiya! Okay. Anyway. Anyway, let me uh, look at the damage output on this. Because <laughs> cause that is the kinetic force. That would be, I think. So, because essentially you're kicking it to, let's see, let's see, goes from one range to another. Okay, I think, I think I've got the damage output that he'll be taking from that. And then that. So basically you see the the bins you basically kicked up and then and uh oh hello hello is anybody here oh no Oh no. Now, I am the one having internet issues. Well, isn't that just great? Well, I'm still recording, so I might as well entertain you all with one of my hilarious anecdotes. Except I don't have anything prepared because tonight I don't seem to be, to be able to function properly. Do you know how hard it is for me to keep the mask on at any point in time? To, to just pretend to be able to function in a social situation, even if it's something as silly as doing a TTRPG campaign. It is the hardest thing imaginable for me. I did not think when I started doing this, that it would be so hard on my psyche. And I found out the hard way that when I do this for such a long time, I tend to just get progressively disheartened to lose my place. Hello. Hello You're again. Back. Welcome back. You're Hello. Back. Yes, I'm back. What did I miss? Uh, I think Father Ted basically got, uh, hit by a bin and then uh, apple and uh, a trash uh, chicken basically came out and now I'm going about to say that uh, all of you as soon as you see the food you straight despite the every five of your beings telling you it shouldn't be good to eat for some reason you have a strange feeling it will heal you does does the food have a face on it <laughs> No. Are they, are, are, do, they, do they happen to be vegetables with uh, uh, celebrity spaces on them? <laughs> nope. Oh, that's a shame. <laughs> <laughs> I would have loved it, to eat the Alfred Hitchcock... Uh, <laughs> the Alfred Hitchcock's turnip. The, ap the, apple, the apple Hitchcock, gotcha. Anyway, uh, on. so Roderick would be next at this point. And because, and because, uh, anyway, yes, so I'm going to, um, anyway, uh, I was going to say, because of the, 
how things are shaping up between you both, sort of thing. You know, Roderick basically stands up and goes like, Well, I never. Well, you rapscallion, we'll see about that. And he gets out, uh, like, this this tin, and uh, which looks like it has powder, and he puts it up his nose and sniffs it. And suddenly you see he gets this aura around him that kind of gives off the same vibe as a animalistic predator that's ready to pounce to maul somebody. He's taking venom. Run for it! <laughs> hey. Okay, Danton. Okay, he'd be right back, so... Okay, so he's wasted a turn doing that, so... Demonox, you're next. Uh... Okay. They're now far away from me. I'm going to have to take a turn just to get to them. Actually, let me double-check something, because I think... Uh, I need to double-check something. Yes, you did. You got your stance power up to to 100%. Oh, good. Well. Wow. Yeah, um, you, because you took a lot of damage in that previous session, that meant you got most of the stance the power bar up. Okay. So that's an option uh, you can use if you want to. Uh, I don't think it would, it would play out right the second. Do the right the second, like... It's the sort of thing you should actually you really use in combo or something. Video game. Yeah, it's also so, a comic book series. Yeah. I don't... I don't think it would work... I don't think it's a f um, thing right now to use... my stance at this exact moment. Because for something that could really be useful... Useful down the line. Okie dokie, so you're gonna save it. That's fine. Yeah, at least for this turn. That's fine then. So I'm gonna have to move closer to them? See, let's see, let's see. You, can, you can definitely move towards... towards them, but I don't think you'll be able to uh, hit anyone just yet. Yeah. Let's see. Give, okay, given the fact there's a good chance no goons are gonna spawn in... Because these guys have got multiple actions and mini bosses. I'm going to attempt to use taunt on them to draw their attention away. Because I don't really want Farmer Ted, since I can't attack him this turn, I don't really want Farmer Ted suddenly wailing into into Ice Pal. Okie dokie. Sounds like an idea. Yeah, because I don't really want him, and it might distract him away from the chicken. Yes. Of course. Well, that would be really bad if he grabs it. Okay, welcome back, Danton. Thanks. <laughs> Roderick is the DC supervillain Snow Flame. Canonically, <laughs> yeah, canonically, I just decided he canonically sniffs a ton of cocaine. <laughs> okay, so, yep, I do my... Okay, let's see. Will I Roderick... Let's see, will Roderick or or Trevor it's Ted. Father Ted notice. Said the wrong name, sorry about that. So what am I doing? No, nah, nothing. I said your name by accident. Yeah, being it's taunted. Okay. Sorry. Anyway. Uh Okay. So Roderick's obviously not affected. However <laughs> However, something about uh, Farmer Ted basically where some, how his arms basically seem to, basically go in many different directions of trying to grab something. Okay, I mean his arms freak out. Okay, okay. Let me see who's up next in the list. Let me Ted. Ted himself. I think it's perfect time to show off this particular thing that he can do then. But it means he wastes his turn doing this, but leaves... That's not a bad thing. I don't mind if he wastes his turn. Okay. Uh, Demonox, uh, everyone, actually, you'll, you'll basically see this. Uh, suddenly, you basically see his his arms detach and become separate from him. <laughs> of course. Here's Medusa. 
<laughs> it's Kitty. Oh boy. Okay, okay. So one set of arms. Actually, they're Just all gonna you... go. They're all gonna go towards Divinox. Just but... when you thought Father Ted wouldn't get any more gross. <laughs> I was I was actually thinking about making another gross comment. So. Good call. <laughs> oh, I just a ball. I said part ten. Yeah. So let me see about. Well, you see, well, you see, Brandon Ross has mellowed out significantly with his own uh, gross aphorisms. So, so somebody has to keep up the pace on that regard. <laughs> Might as well be you. Okay, I'm being attacked by f bloody cousin the thing, my <laughs> thing. Yes, by four. Basically. <laughs> Okay, so... Or DPK. Okay. The detachable kid. I think it's funnier if the arms are attached to the hands also in this case. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'm having an image for that. <laughs> right, let me just take that. Let's just do the damage mitigation here. Okay, okay. So I'm going to... Are they all coming for me? Yes, they're all coming for you. And basically <laughs> what, what happens is... They basically all look like they go into a rage, basically, to, you know, to basically do what... Shouldn't this... my thing trigger now? It probably will, but let me actually do a... Let me actually say how it comes towards you, essentially. Because right. Essentially, what they do is, they look like they become, like, you know, like, they stretch out, fists clenched. They basically then flex towards you, and then... Go straight, like ar like a like a like a volley of arrows straight towards you, in fist form. <laughs> ah! let, let me see what your ability does again, like... just to mind myself. I remember what it does. Yeah, you probably do. I don't use it. Yeah, so let's see. Attracted drawing. Let's see. Ah, you're t ah you're talking about the separate ability, aren't you? That you're. Which that triggers with when people are trying to attack me. Yeah. Uh, let's see. That's, isn't that two separate abilities, though? No, that was, it was it's listed as one thing. I thought I gave you Taunt as one of them, and the other yeah. was the other one. Yeah, that's what you thing. I'm getting confused by this. <laughs> anyway. At least we're all on the same page with that. And if yeah. the end's confusing, Often. we're all sunk. Yes, anyway. When you activate his ability, hostile thing. When he activates his ability, hostile foes become attracted to him. Yeah, the hostile foes become attracted to you. That means yeah, they can that's attack the ability. you. So when I activate the sleep ability, it triggers the secondary one, but the first one still is in response to it. It says you gave me an ability with two stage activation. No, two I did feet. not. I gave you two different abilities I that were separate that. from one another. I was right here in front of me. I did the same thing with everyone. I gave everyone two abilities that were separate from one another. You and me gotta sit down and have a talk sometime. Yes, I'm afraid we have to. Because you're going to completely confuse me because I won't be written down yet and it's apparently two different things. Wheat is going on. Okay, so... I just have a little bit of hits for no reason. No, no, no. Yeah, look, yeah, anyway. Uh, I'm sorry Happy about you. this. Anyway. So, because of this, you're, uh, you're taking basically about 21% uh, of damage. Again, I'm sorry about the confusion. Okay, so in with that, uh, let's see. Okay, with that, the let's see. Next up after Ted is Mad Hog. Oh, yeah, Mad Madness. Right. So where was I? I roar. I roared. I yeah, you roared and bellied. <laughs> bellied. Roderick, and yes, Roderick is now you know like a rage sort of thing. Oh, I'm so bothered right now. <laughs> uh, what's 
Okay. Oh, bother. <clears throat> oh, actually, I should say, oh, bother. <laughs> uh, okay, what to do now? Uh, I'm just... Can I activate one of uh, my... Thing? What, what do I have here? Oh. Yeah, you have two... Ab you have two standalone abilities. Let me actually look at them again myself. Uh, Let's see. Uh, oh, I see yeah. three. Yeah, the bear man comma and burn baby burn is what you have. And what about bear necessities? You don't have access to that yet because the stance power uh, bar has not been to full yet. Right. So I just I want to shoot in point blank. So I'm going to use uh, Bearman Cometh. Okay, okay, roll for your offense. Mm-hmm. I know it's Bearman Cometh, but it also always sounds like to me Bearman Comet. <laughs> oh! That, that sounds like uh, um, a wrestling move, really. <laughs> I think uh, it's a, I think it's the reference of a song, actually. Well, this comet a... now became a shooting star. Yeah, because it completely missed. <laughs> oh, you know, actually, the one it took a while to show on my end, so I'm only seeing it now for the first time. Oh gosh, I hate this game. I'm sorry. No, I don't. <laughs> I don't hate this game. I hate. I just hate losing. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> yeah, so as soon as you try to shoot in point-blank rage, he basically, you know, not only dodged, he, he basically dodged the shot, but also backhanded you like, Naughty Bear! <laughs> that... Ow! That's just rude! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's see, what is Roderick's minimal damage? I like, I like to think that the way, the very specific way in which he avoids the shot, he makes a... Um, it makes a pose like uh, a character in One Piece. He, his body becomes a C. <laughs> the letters, the letter C. Ooh, avoid it like that. Do you have the mental image? Yes, I, 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 I kind of do. I <laughs> see the body horror. <laughs> okay, so you take about four percent damage from that because it's a minimal, essentially. I don't know what hurts the most. The backhanded slap, or the pride. <laughs> okay, so next up, I believe, is Icy Pal. Uh, yes, next is me. Well, that yeah. was that sure was a turn, huh? I am going to continue hammering on Ted with a series of punches and kicks, and I'm going to finish my attack with Huelga Vasilla, trying to hit, trying to. But send him flying straight into the lig liquor uh, part of the store. Oh, the liquor. Okay, yes. so we'll see. we're just we'll going to destroy it. all the stores in the area. I see. First the table yes. of T-shirts, now the liquor store. Will let will, will anybody ever think of the small people here? Nina raises her hand. I am. <laughs> I'm not talking in character, I should have specified. <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay, where's your roll, Icy Pal? I'm just waiting for it. Natural oh. 20! Oh, come on! <laughs> oh, Thank you are taking my dice oh. back? You oh. owe me for that 20. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I don't like Farmer Ted's um, chances of survival on that one. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> let's see, you said you're doing your, let's see, so what was that about doing your entire combo? <laughs> yeah, I am going to go with my kick, uh, boxing punches and kicks and finishing my combo with, uh, you, by using Huel Gavasia to send him flying straight into the ligure cabinets. Let's see okay. him try with his way out of that one when he's all wet. <laughs> Okay, let me... Do... It's all... It's useless now! Okay, okay, let's do that. And then... That. He's gonna take that as well as... Going through... Environmental damage... On top of that. 
Icy Pal, I'm going to tell you this number just because I think uh, everyone should know. But you uh -oh. did 45% damage to him. Ooh, what? what? Nice. nice. That's, That's ridiculous. Nice. That's what happens when you roll natural 20 plus add on top the environmental stuff to play around with. The... So this is what it feels like to be a god. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's your finest moment, Icy Pal. Savor yeah, it. Yeah, it's all downhill from here. <laughs> I wasn't going to say it. Okay, so I think I should probably bring this aspect of the combat into play because because essentially why shouldn't I bring this into combat? Uh... There's, you see the limo basically rushes past you and suddenly you see Delilah sticking her head out of the uh, out of the uh, limo and casually chucks out a grenade into the <laughs> <Davis's> way. <laughs> Everybody has it for Bervis tonight! <laughs> almost oh, like on. your arch nemesis is here. I yes, know, right? almost like that. Jeez, lady! Got, a, got some... Bebe! Oh, God! Oh, God! Not the grenade! Boom. Not the grenade! <laughs> yeah, pretty much... Uh, uh, Bevis, would you like to uh, roll for speed to see if you can dodge it? I would yeah. very much like it, yes. So roll for now speed, please. Now you need to fall on the grenade, that will keep it from blowing up. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, it's not appearing on my end, what's the number? Uh, waiting for it still on my end, too. It hasn't appeared yet. It hasn't. Did you click yeah, roll it? Yeah. I see yes. nothing. Yes, I clicked roll it, and it's loading. And it's nothing. I'm, I'm, I'm going to click on it again. There That's we go. Cool. Oh, Se much better, I say. 17. So, so they... I'm going to do a cartwheel to the side, very agile. <laughs> yes. And also Roderick does the same, because essentially the grenade was close to him as well. And then he... Okay, we're both cartwheeling to the side, 10 out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. I just thought I'd bring that in because it's a staple in these games. Now that's really funny. I was waiting for something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I love it. That that's that's the best idea. <laughs> just casually comes back. Oh, by the way, I forgot to give you this. First <laughs> grenade leaves. <laughs> Next time she comes back, she will have a heavy machine gun or something. <laughs> okay, Ross, it's your turn now. A bazooka. Okay. Um. One of us has, has not moved, correct? He has not Actually. moved out of the shop yet. <laughs> okay, so he's in the shop currently, gotcha. Yes, he's in the liquor store. Um, is cooldown over for my ice bolt? Let me take a look again at at how much... How, it's Because I need to work this out in my head. It's been two turns. Yes, then it should be good. Okay. So, um, I spot at him in the shop. Ah, oh, that's an interesting thing. It's considered there's alcohol everywhere. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Oh, God. I'm having Call of Cthulhu flashbacks to the very first uh, campaign we had. Uh, I know. Oh, five. Oh, dear. Oh, well. Mm. Well, alcohol is much harder to freeze. I'll say, I yeah. think the turns are freezing. That's what I was going to say, but, but still, it's like. You were trying to freeze the alcohol? I thought you were trying to set it on fire. <laughs> he was ice. ice bolt, Mad Hog. Not right. fire bolt. Ice bolt. Right, right. Right, so let me think about this. Uh, let's see. A yeah, fireball would be perfect. Yeah. Oh, anyway. incide incidentally, my name is Fireball Burvis, so. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Cosplay okay. Fi Fire Spervis. Hmm. That's okay, a good idea, actually. Okay, oh no, I'd like to hear more. Okay, dokie. 
Safama Ted takes that much damage. Uh, it seems like when you cast the Ice Bolt, it seemed it seemed like as soon as you it tried to uh, take effect onto the alcohol, it seemed like uh, it didn't work out, and Ted's body doesn't seem also to be getting stuck with it. Yeah. No. Anyway, so Brendan, you're up next. Um. I'll, I've got nothing else I can do other than, you know, wing and see what happens. So, uh... You're gonna, so basically, you're gonna rush into the shop, are you, to basically attack Ted? Yeah, that's really what we got. Uh, yeah, that's, that's that's my significant uh, option. Okie dokie. And a standard 10 roll, so... Uh, it, could be worse. It, it could be a lot. Worse. It could be a lot worse, honestly. That's standard. Again, remember, you know, you're still doing damage at least, and every damage counts in this case. That's where I'm at. So let's see. Let me look. Right then, so. Go away, program. I'm not I'm not dealing with you right now. Away. 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 Anyway, uh, That. And this is only the first boss. Yes, the first boss. Mm -hmm. By the way, uh, Brendan, uh, how yep. do you want to flavor? How do you want to flavor this? Yeah, you know, this attack that you're dealing to him. How you many? Uh, how many hits was it? Oh yeah, you're doing two hits to him. Uh. It doesn't matter. I'll, I'll go in for a uh, kind of like a uh, a leaping elbow strike, uh, kind of like a, like a, like kind of like a, a downward elbow strike, and then I, as I uh, kind of land, I, I kind of crouch down and then do like a rising knee attack to his chin or cool. the back of his head if I'm going to hit him from behind because you know I could be like that. Okay, okay. So when you come in, you know, enter the shop. Ted basically is slowly getting up, going like. Go like, you bloody hooligans! <laughs> and suddenly, you basically cut him off with this elbow strike, which basically bloodies up his nose, and then send him out of the shop again. <laughs> you know, like basically scraping against the ground, alcohol flying everywhere, and back into the into the street. And congrats, you knocked him out. Hey, oh. oh. Hey. All right, hey. good deal. All right, good job. I I just crack my neck and kind of like uh kind of kind of roll my arm a couple times like to stretch out my shoulder a little bit after that elbow strike, uh, and just kind of like look down for a second at my work and grin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nice. Barbies, Barbies is excited about it and asks for a high five to the nearest person. Unfortunately, the near the nearest person is Roderick. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably on, not going to give me a high five. <laughs> oh, possible. Just not when you want. To. I mean, it would be funny if he did, admittedly. But <laughs> Danton, you're up next, then, since right. considering there's only one person left in this duo. Right. Uh, Joe Hill's just going to say, "At least the druid's taken care of." Now the hunter, and I'm going to charge him and going to basically attack him. Okie dokie. Attack on the thing me. That's a 12. Okay, so that will be a free hit combo. Right, so I'm going to basically charge into him with basically a flurry of kicks as I'm basically to kick him once and then still kicking him in midair and then try and basically kick him away, basically. Okie dokie. Maybe, maybe into the bus. Okay, okay, so he takes that much damage. Okay, okay. So, okay. So now it's so now it's Roderick's turn and he's and he's and he's basically going to do two things. He's basically 
first he's basically gonna g say like yeah, basically looks over to Ted, notices Ted is basically is knocked out. Is down. Yeah. And uh let me think now how to say this. Well, I'm looking for some Yeah, here we are. Uh anyway, so he basically goes like so he gets out a shotgun and says, A hunter knows when to fall back and strike later. And he basically fires upon both uh, Bevis and uh, Joe Hild with the uh, scatter shot of the shotgun. He's got a blunderbuss and everything. It's just a shotgun that basically has a spread on it. No, it's a blunderbuss. I decided. The character is mine, so now it's canon. He uses a blunderbuss. <laughs> <laughs> Okie dokie. It works the same way regardless, but still, Thank anyway. <laughs> anyway. Let me think now. A scatter shot against me and Bevis, is what you said. Yeah, it's a scatter shot against both of you. So, I'm just basically working out the damage right now. From Scatter! Shot! Well, Joe Hill's looking busy confident that she's not going to get hit because she's got the bullet with her name on it. Yeah. But Joe Hill, all bullets have your name on it. <gasps> Any other copies? Mm. Okay. Bevis takes 18% damage and, uh, and Joe Hill takes half of that, essentially. Half how, how am I with damage? Let me double check that uh, because I was about to. Uh, 50. Let's see. I Because you were at 56 last time, so that means you were at 38. But because, this, but because of the nature of, of what's going on, basically the limo comes back and he jumps towards it. Escaping on the t on the roof. <laughs> oh, oh yes, got out there. Okay, is combat officially uh, over at, at com this point? Then combat is over, and uh, basically, okay. head basically Rock. goes like, "Should have known better than to try okay, and right. bury corpses with me crops." Okay, um, cosplay sticks a sword directly in the Ted's neck immediately. No, no, that's not no. happening. Basically, Joe Hill stops it. <laughs> So is Nina is absolutely going to stop her. Bervis is going to try and light him on fire nope, because nope. he's covered nope. in alcohol. Nope. I'm going to roll for it. We're not having murder call. What? We, 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 need need we need answers from this man. Did you idiots not understand? Nina oh. looks furious at the rest of you. I'm not trying to do anything to the guy. Yeah, well, I know, but she's talking to Bevis you. and... She's talking to Bevis oh, and... Uh, and cosplay. I don't much care for the tone of your voice, young lady. And I do but not much care for your actions. Cosplay does not understand what you're saying. Well, <laughs> Beatrice, you trans <laughs> Beatrice translates for, the, for that. <laughs> yeah, but I'm sure she understands the tone of voice. I, if you try it, I will simply use my sense power to change the alcohol to water. All right, you can do that. Yes, I can also things like that. <laughs> yeah. you are you are a uh, reverse Jesus. I can alter various things. But can you punch the alcohol out? Punch the alcohol out of alcohol. Can you Probably. kick the leg out of the leg? <laughs> jo yeah, Joe Hill just says uh, information we need. Yeah, Beatrice also would translate that for Ross as well. Okie dokie. <clears throat> so, if uh, no, there is no need to start to stop uh, people from killing him anymore, Nina is going to... Hmm? Oh, when Nina is going to grab uh, Ted by the front of his shirt, lift him up, smash him against the wall and uh, start stare straight into his eyes. Now... Is the part where I ask the questions and you will answer. Now, okay. Um, find well, no, um, cosplay is going to go and um, kill all the other knocked out thugs that from the cosplay. Uh, stop that. Bus. Now, Paris <laughs> is also going to finish off everyone who's everybody who's left alive. 
Nina is going to try to stop you. Uh, okay, guys. you can try. Joe Hill goes, everyone, maybe now's not the time to be sticking around here. More could be coming. We should leave. Let's take Ted with us. Tie him up. Okay, I have to uh, I have to honor something. I have to honor an action that must be made, or rather the agency of someone still at play. Oh. So So Trevor, you're looking around at scanning the area. Yes. You see the limo from before seeming to be hurtling at a very unnatural speed towards you and the group. Oh shit. Of course. Alright, so oh, while everyone's know. screaming and freaking out uh, about, you know, whatever lunacy uh, the, the elf is doing, um, uh, you just hear Trevor go, guys, 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 we got company! Get out of here! Move! And he starts literally running out of the direction of the uh, uh, psychotic uh, limo <laughs> situation. <laughs> Yeah, oh, that's a good one. Psychotic limo. <laughs> Nina yeah. is going to throw Ted. Nina Curry. is going to throw Ted over his shoulder and uh, start booking it as well. Yes. Your hill follows as well. You know what I'm going to do instead? What you gonna try? <laughs> I'm pretty sure the limo um, is targeting me specifically. So instead of moving out of the way, I'm going to try and jump in front of the limo and go through uh, the glass. Essentially, I, hurt. I know. Not. Essentially, I'm going to spear... I'm, go I'm going to try and spear myself through the glass of the limo as it's <laughs> gunning for me. What happens, happens. Okay. I so, ev so. so everyone is... Running, I take it, from the um, limo. Not, um, I will also attempt to, um, jump onto the limo as well. Uh, this is Barbie's moment, come on. Um, basically landing with my sword to use that as a, uh, anchor. So basically, like, as I jump up, try to stab my sword down and use that to be able to hold on to the roof. So okay. there is a problem with the there is a problem with the roll it button because sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't for some reason. I don't know why that is because as far it, let me actually do a test roll real quick. Oh, it's oh, appeared yeah. twice now. It's, oh, it it definitely is slow. That's for sure. Hmm. Now it works apparently. Right. I'll take that natural twenty. <laughs> <laughs> yep, test roll don't count. Yeah, I'm going to, besides. Yes. I'm afraid. I'm afraid that ro the the rolls don't count in this case because oh. this is a cutscene. Gotcha. Nope. <laughs> it's even. It's much worse than that because essentially, you because essentially because essentially you're not the intended target. Oh. Oh, it's Ted. So essentially, what happens is as soon as both of you try to get in the way. You too notice the wheels are not on the ground, and it starts to go to the side and rushes by you, but while basically its wheels seem to be going onto the side of the building and driving, you know, like on its side. Oh my god, it's flying! Okay, so this car has um, the power to drive. Okay, on. so Lovely. what you what you're saying to me is that somebody actually threw. What you're saying to me <laughs> is that somebody actually threw the car at us. Well, it's uh, flying on the wall. No, it's, 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 it's driving oh, along the wall. It's the uh, aliens. To clarify, <laughs> to clarify. It, it has two wheels on the ground and two wheels like on the side of the building. Like it's kind of like a. Driving on its side, or like all four wheels are on the building and they can fly like defy gravity. Now this is no, 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 no. This is the car from Men in Black. Think of it <laughs> this way: think of the hoverboard from Back to the Future that Martin uh, McFly flies on, and it essentially oh. is that in car form. Oh, okay. okay. So it is the car. So it's a car in the world of full throttle, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, 
And at this point, it's going to try and do something extremely unusual. Uh, let's see. But I'm... The it's, um... it's going to try, essentially, to transform in mid-flight. Oh, oh my god, no. it's not a lot. It's oh not a as well. Just Transformers? I, yes. I told you it was the aliens. That's what up, Swiss Prime. Okay, this is so, this is no, great. No, 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 uh oh, yeah, but this wouldn't be Prime though. This would be flipping someone like um. Uh, it could be Starscream. Now. He sucks. Of course, Prime is a Starscream is Chet. Yeah. Uh, I don't oh. actually recall any limousine Barricade. Transformers. What would Barricade. be the, what would be the good name for a limousine themed Transformer? Uh, we can figure that out later. Right, right now, let's no, get... Anyway, anyway, yeah. so anyway the, the way it transforms is less moving parts like you're thinking, and more like the entire car looks like it starts to wibble and wobble and start to change shape, size, and even, like, what attachments it seems to have on it. So it <laughs> just can't go gadgets? You mean it's like liquid metal? Yes, that's probably a good way it's of it. It's a T9000, shit. Wasn't that the T1000? Uh, that was Arnie. It was a T9000 that had the liquid metal. Anyway. Uh, so, yeah. ba so basically, what it looks like it does is, after it basically sends itself flying over you guys, the sunroof opens, and then a arm basically comes out to try and grab Ted from your clutches. Oh. Nope. I don't think we will fight the thing in this thing. This thing's freaky okay. as fuck. Obviously, I'm going to try and stop this. Well, well, you already like free yourself, dude. Now, so basically, you shot right past you. Yeah, basically, our um, chance to do that basically done Mad Hog because we were trying to do something else. Uh. Oh, do we have a... Can we try to stop them from capping Ted? There is one thing you can do, but it's the most but it's the, but it's the most boringest answer I can give you. Roll for dice. Dodge, essentially. Dark! So, so, so speed, essentially, in this case. Dodge! Oh, shit. It's a speed versus speed situation, so I cannot oh, crap. promise you... Oh, crap. You're not in this. So, I can't, yeah. it's, so basically, it's going to be Icy Pal versus uh, the car. Oh. Oh, dear. I, and I am one of the slowest characters. Okay, let's see. Uh, yeah, I think, so. I think I actually saw the me. Oh. oh. No. So, me okay. and uh, Bear, we saw the slowest ones. Uh, I'm also three. Two. Oh. Yeah, well, we you, have you, speed you. of two. Oh, well, yeah. and it was eight. That's, um... That's not probably good. Not, good, not enough, probably. Uh, I, the, uh, you're actually slower than the bear. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to say this, uh, sadly, the car made a 13, so it beats your roll. <laughs> you guys going to win if you tried. Well, I mean, I also uh, rolled a 13. Yes, but you're on the other side, man. You're not in... Hey. Yeah. So I was anyway. the target because I was carrying Ted. Yeah, you, were, yeah. you essentially have belly flopped on the floor attempting <laughs> to hit the thing. So the car essentially grabs Ted. It flips back onto its wheel side, bringing Ted into the car and starts to rush off into the distance of the streets. Your know, um, looks really confused about what just happened because, like, did it just change form? Well, that just happened! Yeah, even the blue's actually awake for this one, and he's even he's thinking like, What just happened? The car mm -hmm. went wibble wobble, turned arm, grab person? Where, where's we... Beatrice? She told us about all this random crap and never said the T-1000 vehicle was real. Yeah, Beatrice just looks confused, is trying to basically figure this out herself, and goes... It goes like, I'm trying to... I'm trying to understand... What just happened just now? Oh, so you're just as confused as we are. Awesome, cool. Can I? This is yeah. still great, guys. Glad, uh, glad we're gonna parlance our way to victory Lulu, against the Magic yeah, Syndicate. Lulu is um, now talking mm. full Chinese because he has absolutely no idea what to say in English. Can you we know, get the I hell just, out of here? Actually, you know, just... yeah, go Actu on. Actually, Devar, uh, given given this is the limousine of my sworn arch nemesis. Oh, hey, limousine. 
Do you think I could roll for insight? I'm afraid not, because the limousine, is, you know, uh, is has nothing to do with your backstory, nor with their backstory either. It's a it's... vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes. Very astute. It's Thank you. And you. <laughs> Thank you. You, you must have. Covered. You must. You must have rolled a natural. You must have rolled a natural twenty on the insight. Yes. <laughs> you discovered yeah. it is indeed so, a black limousine. So, so Beatrice basically only offers, basically says, there's only two things it could be: either it's transformed by technology, or it's some creature that's connected to the car itself, or it's well, a mimic. Either those answers work great, doesn't change the outcome, so we need a new plan and probably get out of here because uh, the, the the bus failure was annoying enough. Yeah. Yeah. So we, need right now. Get, we need to get Slaughtering to... Slaughtering hugs before oh. anyone no. notices. We yeah. have get to over oh, you. Oh, mother hobo shenanigans. <laughs> anyway. Everybody, everybody, climb on my motorbike. <laughs> I'll carry you to safety. Beatrice said basically, you know, brings cosplay to with them to go like come on we we haven't got time for this we need to get out of here you know oh, you know claire stackers at the at the direction the car disappears grits her teeth and starts uh, booking it with everyone else okay. yeah. Let's, 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 yeah sorry go then let's, let, i was just gonna say is joe hill just goes to nina let's hope that this mr caleb has answers Yes, we need to go find a friend, a friend. Speaking of which, you do hear a voice basically go like, Hey, you! Oh no, not the voices in my head again. Now's not the time Good day to forget my meds. And so you see... Blood at the uh, direction of the voice. You basically see what looks like a man with a cap who signals you to his direction. And Beatrice goes like, It's him! Our contact. What he was watching us the whole time. It was I think very. Not, yeah. It was very inconspicuous. <laughs> and then you basically see him look around, like very, uh, like, uh, like he's uh, paranoid about something. And just goes like, "Let's get out of here, away from the eyes of and ears of vainglory." Uh, what accent is this supposed to be? It's crazy, so we can just continue. Yes. yes. Anyway, so as you all Cold. follow as you all follow this man, I hope you're all following this man. I yes. Am. Yes. Be sure. Graduate. If I there's have no, to. Because there's nothing because there's no, no other source of information right now. However, Lou, before everyone else moves off, Lulu grabs the chicken. <laughs> <laughs> no oh, one's touched yes. it, no one's had it, I've nicked the both of them. <laughs> Sorry, you all. That's good okay. point. Also the apple as well. <laughs> I've got the biggest one, so I, yeah, I've, I've got the health big boost. How much health do I okay. get back? Uh, it won't matter much in this case because uh, because everyone will be getting healed by the end of the session anyway. So okay. Ooh, anyway, That's... so how much anyway. would it normally heal if it was about twenty about about twenty five percent of a chicken like that? Seven. I was at thirty seven. Yeah, that's a make. The last ability usage. Anyway, so as you all follow this man, you end up going down many alleyways of London. At one point, he pushes a wooden fence, which opens a way to the other side to another back area, and you all end up seeing a door that's left open at the back of an establishment. There seems to be a big, strong-looking gentleman wearing a hoodie that signals to your group, and once you all rush inside, he shuts the door behind you, locks it and puts a single huge barrel of keg in front of the door before proceeding to stack three more. As you as he is doing this, the strange man in the cap rubs his goatee and says in a thick Irish accent, Ah, oh, you lot sure know how to give them a run for their money, even when they try and sneak a royal flush into their hand. So now you get a better look at him. He is wearing a brown flat cap, which strangely obscures his eyes in shadow. Uh, but what you can see is that he's, he's, he's middle-aged looking due to his beard being brown, yet showing age, which strays greys and whites. 
and appears to be wearing a cream button shirt with the first two buttons undone and does a and it seems to do a poor job of hiding that he has a beer belly despite it being covered and he's wearing a pair of black trousers with a pair of suspenders attached to them and a pair of well polished brown shoes very nice uh, shoes uh, Be Beatrice then says this is my contact Caleb Tepper a fellow parlancer Ah, oh, pleasure to meet all of you. Whether it's a rebellion or a fine picnic in the summer sun, it's still wonderful to meet new faces. I am Caleb, though so few people know I exist on accounts that I should be drinking with the devil, as me folks at home would used to say. And the, oh, and the big strapping gentleman over there is me bodyguard, William Montford. Uh, William simply nods while crossing his arms and gives a simple... Hey. Trevor hey. kind of gives a giddy wave and says, Hey, Willie. <laughs> William, yeah, kind of, William kind of just gives a just a very serious stone-faced nod. Berbis, Berbis uh, writes something down on a, piece of, on a piece of paper and uh, gives him to the big guy. Yeah, he reads it, whatever you gave him, like, looking like he's already tired of this already. <laughs> It's an autograph. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so William here looks to be of Indian descent. His straight shoulder-length black hair wears a black leather jacket with a dark red hoodie sticking out from the back of the jacket. A pair of blue jeans, black fingerless gloves, which have a silver studs on the knuckles, and black combat boots with silver chain hanging around his waist. Uh, Caleb then says... He's not much for chit chat, but he's a good, d dependable lad. Now, that's good. Now, should we get down to business? We should be safe here for the time, so you can all rest easy for a bit, so we can be in tip top fighting form. And Caleb then looks over to cosplay, noticing the state of her dress. We'll get the young lady a, in the nip some clothes. There should be some in the back behind the bar. Dignity for our life, you know. William hey, kind of... Aunt, I am cosplay. William, you... <laughs> William rolls his eyes at this before heading to the back room. It doesn't take him long to return and offer cosplay said clothes. Like, in the most rudest way he could possibly do it. <laughs> anyway. Beatrice and uh, pipes and you know, like, Caleb, there are two people in our group who had precious items destroyed by the goons. Oh dear. Let me see them. Nina is uh, pulling out her Lamed's first aid pack. Uh, Trevor, I believe you also have a whip. Yeah, yeah. He, he then looks over the damaged items and he kind of sighs and says, oh, Such damage. Fear not, I can fix them. It's this moment he takes a hold of the items, says in a very calm and oddly haunting soft tone, Waste not, want not. <laughs> and suddenly, there is this energy forming around the edges of the damaged whip and medical bag, and they both start to reform as if being sewn back together by said golden energy in a few s and in a few seconds the items are fully back to normal as if they were before the battle uh i want to learn that can i learn that somebody teach me that please it's oh, then wow. Ka caleb kind of sighs and says ah, there good as new i would say right. be care be careful with them but knowing our enemies who don't play fair well, let's just say we have to take all the advantages we can make up for such dirty tactics. Appreciate your effort. Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you. That I thought I would be, I would have to spend the re rest of the night to, to just fixing this. So these items hold sentimental value to you. This definitely does. Yes. yes. Aside from well being generally useful. In what in what way, might I ask? 
it's a first aid pack. You use it to heal people. I meant, who is it from? <laughs> uh, Nina chuckles. My mom gave it to me. Oh, yeah? This is my mom's whip also. Huh. No. Wow, I never had a... That's cool. Never had a mom. I see. I believe that is biologically impossible. <laughs> you mean it's bio you mean it's impossible for a bear to have been born by anybody by anything? <laughs> that's what you're saying because that seems oddly that's that's racist to bears. So can't they like create life in test tubes now? I mean, it is 1999. <laughs> anyway, so Caleb continues by saying, "Then I'm glad I can reverse that if they are ever destroyed. Items like these that connect our trust to our family." should never have to meet an end in this world. And he has this solemn look to him as he looks down to the table. Ignoring the uh, NPC backstory hook, shall we continue? <laughs> yeah. So, uh... Not like that's... I can follow up on it. I'm currently probably changing clothes somewhere. Well, yeah. More like so putting on clothes. It's, it's then Will basically goes, Caleb. And then... Oh, right, the plan. Uh, well, why don't you make some sure nothing happens to our guests while I'm in the back? Uh, now would be a time to tend to your wounds and unwind before we have to leave uh, the Wooden Lion pub. Uh, be back in a tick. And he then rushes to the back and sounds like he's going up some stairs as well. Uh, by the way, as you... There's a TV that's on currently... And uh, there seems to be a news report that's going on right now uh, by a middle-aged woman uh, who basically is talking while a headline on the TV says, Attack on Whitechapel. Oh, this, uh. all right, this was in Whitechapel. And then the newsreader basically says, The area of Whitechapel had to be evacuated after a bomb blew up within an alleyway. Thankfully, there were no casualties, but the attack is still going on as police have the area cornered off and trying to find the perpetrators responsible, who are most likely still within the area. Reports have come in that the authorities have everything under control and will continue to do their job of protecting the British public. And while the attackers' identities are still not known, it has been heavily suspected that they are young and are armed, dangerous and violent. So with that, we go over to our psychological expert to discuss the matter of what could drive young people to such wanton acts of violence. That in this sounds day and age. Oh, that sounds very familiar. That's it. Turn on the elbows. Let's see. Okay, so and basically it just keeps going on like that as the interview an expert as other news stories go across <laughs> the bottom of the screen, like. Imminent rainy summer. Uh, let me start over. Imminent rainy, rainy summer. Imminent rainy summer coming. Computers, the way of the future. Also, I Irish-born race car driver Alan O'Druff wins Queen. first place at the national racing competition, and Queen. scientists making strides in medicine. Oh no! This is about. Oh no, this is about the time in which that massive douchebag quack came out with the theory that vaccines cause autism. You are remembering, you are reminding me of that atrocious time. If I, if I remembered that news story, I would have made that reference. Instead, I decided to basically make up these stories. Gotcha. But, though the Queen, only another, in other news, Queen Victoria says Charles will never be king. <laughs> The only true, the only true news that was at the time was that Britain was going to have a very rainy summer more than usual that year. <laughs> and that's it, really the only thing that's honest here. Wow! Did it, did it actually turn out to be true? Out of curiosity, it did. It was yes. it turned out to be true. It was very rainy for a summer wet. that year. Mm, Nina is watching the news show and comments. Well. Good thing they they are they don't have our faces known, or at least they are not plastering them all over the news. On another, on another news, we we successfully identified a giant grizzly bear wearing sunglasses and a big healthy stupe. <laughs> he 
here is the here is the <laughs> he has a motorcycle. <laughs> Meanwhile, Will just Will Will just kind of casually just throws you away. Be stupid of them to uh, show your faces. People would then start asking questions. Then hmm. <sighs> yes. Nina concentrates anyway. on patching herself and everyone else up as we wait. Okay, yeah. so what outfit did I end up getting? This is one thing I forgot to actually get a picture for, honestly. Can we can we workshop the perfect out can we have a uh, montage of her choosing outfits and we judging <laughs> them? <laughs> Sadly, it's not... hit them all. <laughs> Sadly it's not the case considering that uh, Ross uh, basically put it to me to basically uh, chuck outfits his way, essentially. Correct. Literally chuck outfits <laughs> towards his general direction. I wonder if I could find it based on uh, uh, on Discord gifts. How about a stereotypical Hawaiian shirt? So she looks like Magnum PI. I don't think you'll find one that fit her. You're, you you would be a bad cosplay of Magnum PI, though. <laughs> You probably had to tape her, um, her puppies down for that. Okay, Tifa, so it's Tifa either gonna be, it's gonna be either the one on the left or the one in the middle. <laughs> which which one was your favorite of the series, Ross? Um, I'd say the one on the left. I've always been partial to SO one um Blaze. Mm, okay, yeah, okay. the headband. <laughs> SOR one, yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. okay. I so, thought you'd choose that one. So yeah, SO one S. Streets of Rage 1 outfit it is, then. <laughs> I thought that'd be the one as well. <laughs> I was expecting this. <laughs> Don't worry, we're starting off with the most obvious references before I get into the weird ones. <laughs> is she going to be dressed as a pink ostrich at some point? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, as this kind of uh, um, hints at... Um... The outfits that she will be changing into are all based on prominent um, characters from various beat ups throughout the ages. Hey, Ross, I cannot wait for your poison cosplay. I don't know what happens sooner or later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, so Caleb comes back and he went, all right. Go around, lads and lasses. We have a plan to concoct. So essentially, uh, the gimmick of you losing clothes is uh, a, a vehicle to cosplay as various characters in various beat em ups. That's clever. <laughs> That's fine. I am cosplay. You are. <laughs> yeah, you are cosplay. cosplay. <laughs> you are cosplay. You're living up the legacy that you've set yourself on. <laughs> Right, so Beatrice then goes like, as as Caleb basically sets up on a table with a map of London, uh, Beatrice goes like, right, it's time we cut to the chase. Thankfully, we know where Vainglory is located. However, to get to their true base of operations, we need to head to their port access building. The only one of all of London is here. She points to the map with her hammerhead of her cane. This building may look like a typical office building on the outside, but it hides a few secrets. Namely, it acts of secondary base of operations for secret projects, creation of propaganda, and of course, important meetings amongst all the high-ranking syndicate members, a few trusted individuals, and especially Goon. And transforming cars. Most importantly, inside that building is the entrance to the true base of Vainglory. A portal that leads to Camelot. Of course. Sir, what? I'm sorry, what? what? Camelot. Uh, okay, it was, it was either Camelot or Stonehenge. Let's Which face is... it. Stonehenge is real. <laughs> Camelot did... is not. What's going on? Did you, did you say Paul? Yes, a portal to Camelot. It, you see, Camel Camelot, Camelot. Yes, C Camelot exists in a place called Avalon, a place that, that once existed in our reality, but has since 
the death of King Arthur has been separated into its own pocket dimension. That is, without a shadow of a doubt, very cool. <laughs> yes, it is very, very cool. But a very silly place. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah. Camelot is a very silly place. Not no, one knows, for it. <laughs> no one knows how or why it came to be there. But what we do know is that Camelot has the strange effect of being indestructible to damage and is the resting place of King Arthur himself, forever standing tall within his throne room. Mm, it have, mm, I sure hope nobody revives the dead corpse of King Arthur and it's any, in any way, shape or form a boss. Now the, cast, now the castle is being used by Vainglory. Technology now infesting its halls and great majesty that was once depicted as a fortress that upheld the code of honorable chivalry and justice for all. Ironic that a place that was supposedly a symbol to stand for the people is used as a means to subtly subjugate them to core hubris. Subtly, so, he says. <laughs> so, uh, are, are there leaders of Vain Glory there right now? And Dragon might be there if he's reporting to his boss who resides there. And, and, and we, we want to go there now because why? Hill. It's, it's better to um, hit them. It's better to hit them hard before oh, before we give them no. a chance to raise up any more defenses against us, since they know we're coming. All Isn't I it? know is that my long time narch nemesis have allied themselves with this prominent group of filibusters. So I need. I need to get rid of them, and if they happen to be in the same direction as everyone else, then I say, I say, let's bust them up. Hey, final <laughs> drop. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the syndicate bust up. <laughs> uh, you, you, you said that King Arthur stands forever. Is that just figuratively or literal? Uh, like I mean. <laughs> He yes? Lit he, li he literally stands tall, battle wounds and all. It, does that mean he's undead? No. He says we're very serious turn. Okay. No. He is, he is definitely dead as a doornail. <clears throat> but, you know, a very, a, very, alive. A, very, a very tall doornail. <laughs> right. So once we're inside said castle, we must make our way to the main office. Where, boss, where the boss of Vainglory is located. In the restricted area, only Pendragon's allowed to enter. The room where the Knights of the Round Table once sat. Who is the boss of Vainglory? Nobody knows. Only Pendragon has ever had the privilege of speaking with them. Alright. Follow-up question, Baba. Who's Love Pendragon? It. I missed out on a lot of info. I just came out. I, I came in late in case you didn't notice, Bebe. <laughs> just made a quite gnarly entrance with my cool motorbike. Oh, yeah. But I missed out all the of expositioning course. and whatnot. Ah, of course. You didn't see the knight clad, the knight in armor, did you? There was a knight and I missed it? Ah, oh, dang it. Yes. Yeah, I think Nina threw a rock at him. Yes, I did. It he was dodged not it. effective. Yes, he dodged it. And Dragon has been known to be the fastest of Vainglory. Especially with his jousting lance. Oh, yeah. oh we're going... Oh, oh, we're going to do some... Oh, we're going to do some jousting, eh? Some major comparing... Some one-upping, I see. Some measurements. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Go it's on. And Caleb basically interjects by saying, This is where I come in. I know the streets of London intimately as me love for me family's recipe for potato pancakes. Potato pancakes? 
By the way, the original—I didn't—I decided to not use the original title for potato pancakes because I don't want to confuse you all. But they call it Boxty. Yes, mm. I remember that from uh, my game. There are several ways we can go if we want to get to our target. The straight and true way is going back into the streets, but we would have to fight more of goons. Though that does mean if we take them out now, there may be less to deal with in the future. Wait, you mentioned that the, the building that house, houses the portal for, to Camelot is also the goon headquarters. Is that where they are being made? No, goons are goons are not a, goons are all, yeah, let me start over. Beatrice basically clarifies by saying, no, the goons up uh, organization is a separate thing that's basically not even in this country. It's somewhere else, though. I though I have not been given the clearance at the time to know of that information. Would someone like Ted know? Not likely. I'm Shit. hoping. I'm hoping Pendragon will know, at least. You know. Okay. Cool. You you wanna know something funny? For the longest time, I thought Pendragon was supposed to be pronounced Pendragon. Isn't that funny? <laughs> Accents. <laughs> am I right? <laughs> uh, hmm. uh, yeah. 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 Very funny. Uh. Mm -hmm. Just, okay, just a, so just a thought. Yeah. It's just then the Caleb continues. The Caleb then continues by going like, if I may continue, there is other ways we can get there. We have the subway. If we take the right paths through the underground, we may deal with way less goons and maybe even none if we give them the slip. And then there's the sewers. Not exactly the most desirable place to frolic, through, but it would certainly be the highest chance to avoid as many goons as possible and get to our target area with fresh bodies and stamina to spare. There are These are our options. While we could make the choice for you, it you lot are our leading invading force, and so I say we put it to a vote since you know your own capabilities well enough and what you can handle. Depends on how uh, confident or cautious you are. So we were either going Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in the sewers, or we're going in the Final Fight subway. Or, or we are taking the, streets. the Streets of Rage. Mm. That too. They all come with, as mm. Caleb has mentioned, I will repeat again, the streets, you can basically take out more goons, meaning you have to deal with less later, though it does mean you're probably going to risk losing more health along the way. Hmm. So the sores basically are the other extreme of dealing with way less goons now and getting straight to the building, your target building. But the bosses will probably have more goons to deal with. Uh, well, meanwhile, the thing that's worth knowing is um, if we go across the streets or get in the more battles on the way there, we'll also have our um stances ready to use most likely by the time we get to the bosses as opposed to having to hope that um we build up enough that they can be deployed when we need them oh i already yeah. had, i already had my mind made up on the matter i'm definitely yeah. go definitely streets of rage for me <laughs> okay, yeah kind of partial to that too so what uh what do you have a spoil you all think? Uh, I mean, I, I, if I, if I get the chance, I would like to avoid the sewer level <laughs> as a principle. <laughs> so let's go streets of rage. <laughs> well, since you said that, let's go sewer level. <laughs> uh, I don't. We shouldn't go through the sewers. I fo they are filled with alligators and they are bitch to fight. <laughs> We're going I mean, by your Billy on this, huh? Different. <laughs> okay, first of all, completely wrong geographical location for that. <laughs> what? Sewers are the same everywhere. No, but <laughs> they, they, they are sure. In your, but there are no alligators in the British sewers? There are no alligators at all in Europe. <laughs> mm, that seems suspect. 
<laughs> that's what the alligator. That's what the alligators would like you to think. <laughs> okay, so I don't need you. So how about the rest of you? Uh, what do you want to choose if you had the choice? Um, Find Nina the streets. Nina, is, Nina would uh, vote Metro, but is fine with the streets. Yeah, Johild would have said the subway because that's the least. Uh, well, it's the it's the least filthiest, and it's also the least likely to basically uh, uh, have a lot of damage done to us. But if the if the majority is the streets, she'll follow. Streets so, of rage. So we have three for streets, uh, two for uh, metro, and uh, does Lubu vote? Uh, hmm. Lubu abides. Ow. Out of character, it's a case of. I can see where the tactics for both of them are. I mean, yes, it'd be like, oh yeah, we get there with less, you know, stamina loss. If we take the the uh, more secure routes, but at the same time, it would then be countermanded if they just bring your know, more goons to the fight. That is yeah. also true. And then you got the point of you know building people. Some people still need to build their um, get their. Uh, there. Stance power's up and running. Yes, uh, it sounds like you're saying we should, you're, you're in favor of the street, more likely. I yeah, think this is a no brainer. In character, Lubu's not actually paying think... attention because he's asleep. Yes, especially <laughs> considering that um, there's also probably going to be more apples or um, other such healing items available as we trek through the streets too. Yes, I cannot yeah. wait to I cannot wait to break down a barrel and find a a briefcase full of money under it. <laughs> <laughs> check, or a bag. Check, check uh, a, well, checkmate. Uh, I was gonna say out of character. Just you play the beat 'em up game. When you fight the bosses in the game are they easier or harder with goons around them? And the question and the answer is they're always harder. Therefore we gotta kill the goons before we get to the boss. Unless Abs, I you know, agree. We wanna we wanna unless we wanna wipe on a boss, basically. Okay, okay. Dokie. Well, I did offer the other two areas as not only strategy, but also for as well as uh open to more role play if you guys wanted to. So that's another thing I basically threw in there, so but you know, uh, but since you've all chosen the streets and you seem settled on it, uh, Caleb, uh, yeah. Caleb, Caleb will then say, Feeling brave, are you? Then rest a bit more. Mentally prepare yourself and we'll head out. Yeah, Joe Hill looks kind of uncomfortable, but she's like, uh, Okay. <laughs> Just looking a little nervous. <laughs> if this is our plan of action, then we shall. Then let's prepare. Not every day someone gets in. Gets, goes in with the intent of taking down a powerful organization. So we have to make this count. The, tr the track on fire plays in the background. <laughs> yeah. Caleb Ben basically goes like, by the way, do not worry if your items get damaged in the, in the fight. I will stick nearby as much as I can and uh, jump in if I am able. But my stance powers work in a very peculiar way compared to you. Hmm. Okay. Thank okay. you. Just let us know. Um, I also, maybe uh, carrying like another item with us might help in protecting some of our more precious items. Yeah, she says to Nina and Trevor. I've got a cap with me, so one of you two could take it to put it over your item, so that gets hit instead. Wait, what was that? I got a, yeah. I, I I got the uh, cap from the bus driver, you know, the odd job hat. So one of you two could use it to protect your precious item. I you know how that don't works. What's going that's on there? Going to work. It's a basically, it's basically, you know, uh, Joe Hill What's basically... What's going on there? Yeah, that's what I'm wondering what? now. Someone's moving about. 
Oh, that was probably my cables fell from my ta ah. desk, so I needed to pick them back up. Okay. okay. So anyway, I believe Danton is trying to uh, reference the mechanic of the basically items basically having a priority, but he's trying to basically flavor it as uh, like, hey, uh, you know, why not use this item to protect another item that you have on you? Mm -hmm. Sort of deal. <laughs> well, Is that how that works? I mean, if that's how that works, we use it on the uh, the 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 uh, icy yeah. pal's bag because uh, healing is more important than you know my medium ranged attack. Well, if it if it does work like that, then Nina is going to accept the hat. Oh well, thank you, Johild. Uh, you're you're very welcome. Uh, after all, it's uh, nice to keep things that your family gave you. Uh, protected. Yeah, indeed. She smiles. Joe Hill slightly smiles back. Bervis is combing his hair. Lilbu is ve still very much late, but gives a thumbs up. <laughs> gives a thumbs up. <laughs> it's... Okay. Then. Oh. I'm, I'm basically was going to leave the floor open a bit longer because I thought you guys would wanted to roleplay but it seems that's not the case. Uh, yeah, the problem is that it's so very, very yeah, late. Yeah, I know it is. That's why. Anyway. But uh, this is a good opportunity to do such things in between sessions using the chat. Yeah. But anyway, I'm so basically if no one wants to say anything else, I'm going to say the session ends here for the night. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. okay. We have we have finally finished stage two. Yes. Yay. Yeah. So I'm I'm yeah, all the, I I'm, waiting for, but... I'm waiting for the special bonus stage in which we get to wreck a car or something. <laughs> the car ran away. Yeah, we tried. <laughs> we tried. It ran. Well, quick, let's find another car. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, no, that's not. I mean, we've wrecked the bus already. You know, Never it's mind. a you know, it's a it's, it's a pity that we left the bus behind. I would have loved to use it to drive it well, through all the goons. We couldn't remember because it had the uh, wheel lock on it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, not, I'm not going to let that stop me. <laughs> <laughs> it did. <laughs> that's true. But that's that's only because Devar said so. <laughs> Gone so you have to apply the will of the DM. That's so, how the wheel locks work. I, I, yeah. I, I listen. It did I stop you. Listen, I am a bipedal bear with sunglasses who ride a motorcycles and all that. I think I'm doing a good job in defying God as it is. <laughs> Oh, yeah. don't tempt your fate on that one. Yeah, anyway, oh, so other than, other than that, uh, uh, and the fact that, you know, I'm still basically trying to get used to the system and, you know, that I have going on. Uh, what, anyone want to... Oh, okay, Brendan. Okay, yeah, Brendan. Good night, uh, good night, night. Okay. Good night uh, Brendan. Have a uh, good uh, one. Bye, no, guys. Anyone, you too. Uh, anyone wants to uh, give it a, uh, like, Com comments or advice or whatever, like, did they enjoy it or did it could be better? I, I, don't think there's, uh, I don't think there's a problem with the system as a whole. I think we just need to um, focus a little more getting um, stuff around the table. Like, if we had gotten through the um, combat section of it a, a, a little more diligently, I mean, then we would have had a nice chunk of time at Ross, the end to do the role-playing. Ross, I have no idea how the campaign you worked on for uh, several months went down, but as far as my experience with this table is concerned, that fight moved a hell of a lot faster than I am used to. So hearing well, you complain about the glacial pace was weird to me. Well, um, it, I, I it did like take about an hour. Around the table pretty quickly. We, it was a bit uh, long. It took a bit long at the beginning, but we quickly got back on the swing of things. 
Yeah. yeah. I Again. think the uh, downside is that we also had a four week break as well. So. Mm. Yeah, that probably didn't help things. But I mean, get, get I'm going to head off early because I've been up since. Yeah, it's okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. See you yeah. later, Dave. Have, 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 have a good Bye night days. of. Have a long good night of sleep, Lubu. <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah. But yeah, I, but yeah, uh, I understand that basically, you know, uh, things seem to uh, not go as quickly as I would have envisioned it either. But still. Uh, oh, yes. Believe you me, Devar. Believe you me. I understand how you feel. I too have this whole idea of how my game show is going to play out, and then we get to the actual date of recording, and everything goes wrong for one reason or the other. It's very frustrating. Mm. You Say you set yourself up for disaster by essentially having high expectations <clears throat> of yourself, which is very unfair to you and to everyone else. Yeah. Uh, let me think now. What was gonna? I will say one thing. I probably do since I was going to put stance powers back to zero percent for everybody since we're in a very relaxed position now and that means battle adrenaline will be going down okay. uh and i thought this might be a clean way to basically offer you guys the opportunity to basically uh keep track of how much stance power you get that would be helpful yes because be i uh, specifically i was this working completely in the dark on that yeah so i know uh because because you see that it's, it wasn't my intention to do that in the first place, but I decided to do it for the sake of making sure the system would be balanced first, you know, before I give it to you, because, like, I didn't want you guys basically going in, basically realizing, you know, it's kind of broken. <laughs> you know, and to basically ease everything in sort of deal. I get you. The, 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 the first two stages were supposed to be... Um... What was uh, that? Very tutorially, so... Yeah, so... It's just the rule of thumb is, whatever damage you take, you double it to basically to your stance power. Any damage you do, it essentially is the number you get for your stance gotcha. power. So, which basically, in theory, the damage part of aspect of the game would mean you get it faster. So, hopefully, that will all basically be good. Because well, based on my numbers, based on my numbers I was seeing, it would seem like people were getting really close to stance powers or having access to it. Devar, you tried to implement the fast pacing of a beat-em up into a turn-based strategy game, and that's that in itself is admirable, and that's only ever been done in video games before now. <laughs> Okay. What, what I'm trying to say, what I'm, the, the original point is that you're trying to do something very ambitious and uh, creative for the sake of a brisk, fun experience for everybody, but you're only human. So <laughs> inevitably, you're going to make mistakes. But, you know, that's remember what I said when we recorded our game show, which you should totally be yeah. watching, by the way. Teething pains. Yes, I know. Teething. Yeah. I will have so many teething pains in the future as I make more episodes of that game show as much as you will as you DM and GM and do the whole uh, playing god thing. <sighs> yeah, speaking of which, the next right. session should be the 6th of uh, next month, if it's two weeks from now. Yeah. That's right. Uh -oh. well, what was that? <laughs> it, it's Ross's uh, alert. Ross... <laughs> All right, I'm leaving. Good night, everyone. Right. Okay, good night, yeah. Ross. Uh, yeah, I gotta okay. go as well. Also, yeah, I think, yeah. So I'm going I to go too. So, audience. okay, on that, on that note, uh, good night, everybody. Thanks yeah, for watching and whatnot. Bye. Bye bye, and take care, everybody.